Let's look at the energy side of the mechanism of enzyme action and talk about activation energy. On this graph, I have plotted free energy versus time. And the graph that just appeared is a graph of the progress of the formation of C and D from A and B in the reaction shown. A plus B goes to C plus D. If you look at the chemical equation for this reaction, you will see that it is talking about an exergonic reaction. Why? Because the equilibrium arrows have the longer arrow pointing towards the product. So what's happened here? Let's go back and do this one more time. In the progress of this reaction, there's a moment where there's a large input of free energy in order to get the reaction to go, in order to form something called the transition complex. In this instance, we can call it an AB complex. So A and B are brought together so they can interact at the surface of this enzyme. That's an energy barrier. Why is it an energy barrier? Well, if you think about it for a moment, if you put A and B in a test tube or in the cytoplasm of a cell, molecules of A and molecules of B will tend to diffuse away from one another, won't they? Just by natural diffusion, they won't stay together. They're not attracted to one another. The function of an enzyme, however, is to provide a surface called the active site, which will draw A to it and B to it by virtue of mutual affinities. And by drawing A and B to the same site, the enzyme is in fact overcoming entropy, right? It's overcoming the tendency of the molecules to exist in a disordered state. Well, this energy barrier can be overcome by enzymes, but we'll see also this activation energy barrier can be overcome in several other ways. We can lower the activation energy barrier simply by raising the temperature in the absence of any catalyst. This is not done in living things, of course, because cells don't regulate their temperatures as a rule, certainly not enough to make enzymes act considerably faster or slower. We can throw in an inorganic catalyst in a test tube for a chemical reaction that might occur in a cell. So we could conduct that reaction at standard temperatures at 298 degrees Kelvin in the presence of an inorganic catalyst. And that would even more efficiently lower the energy barrier to the progress of the reaction. But the most efficient thing to do is to use the cell's natural enzyme to convert A and B to C and D. That is the most efficient way to lower the entropic barrier to this reaction. As I pointed out a moment ago, this reaction is exergonic. And you can see that because I've bracketed the free energy that is released as A and B form C and D. You might like to go home and with a piece of paper on a pencil to help you understand it, draw the same reaction in reverse and look at the activation energy under those conditions if the reaction was, in fact, endergonic instead of exergonic. So how do enzymes lower activation energy? Well, as I think I said, their active sites have a high affinity for the substrates, for A and B in this example. And they bring the substrates together. They don't merely bring them together. They bring them together in the right orientation to allow bond rearrangements. So again, activation energy is the free energy needed to overcome entropy.